Hey, super cavaliers out there and super chemists. This is Tracy Folks, and I'm ready to talk to you about chapter 18. I feel like chapter 18 is pretty easy. There's a little bit of algebra to it, a little bit of maybe solving for X, but I feel like this is a lot easier than what we have been doing. So chapter 18 starts off talking about entropy. And as you know, these notes can be located on, um, on Schoology. Okay, so you can follow along there. Entropy, for lack of better words, is chaos. And in chemistry, we like for things to be chaotic, okay? The more random and chaotic they are, there's more of a chance that things will react. Think of it this way. If you go to the prom and there's only 10 people there, not a lot of probability that you're going to react and meet that super chemist of your dreams. Let's say you go to prom and there's a thousand people there. It's more random. It's more crazy. There's more of a chance that you're going to bump into the super chemist of your dreams. Okay. So in chemistry, we want entropy. We want chaos. And how do we get things more chaotic? Well, one of the ways we do it is just by changing the state. Solids we know are pretty orderly. So they don't have a lot of entropy. So if I melt them, I can increase entropy when I become a liquid because it moves around a little more. And then gases have a ton of entropy. Now, the next thing your chapter talks about is something called Gibbs free energy. Okay. And we did a couple examples in class. And again, this is that slide, Gibbs free energy. The biggie biggie with Gibbs free energy can you see this on there? Because I feel like it's getting faint. Let me try a different one. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. All right. So if delta G is positive, you are going to have a non-spontaneous reaction. If the value you get is negative, it means it's spontaneous. That means I don't have to do anything to that reaction to get it going if it's spontaneous. It just reacts on its own. Delta H is going to be given to you in kilojoules. Please make sure before you put it into this equation, you multiply it by 1,000 to get joules because entropy is going to be in joules. T stands for temperature. What do you think temperature is going to have to be in? What does temperature always have to be in? Kelvin, and if I give you degrees Celsius, you're going to add 273. So mainly you're just plugging and chugging numbers. And if this answer is positive, you know you're dealing with something that's non-spontaneous. And if it's negative, you're dealing with something that is spontaneous. All right. Now, the next thing we talked about in class was finding um, standard entropies. And this is where I asked you for the entropy in an equation, and you have to do products minus reactants. And I think all of you thought this was pretty easy, okay? So I will give you, just like in the example we did in class, I will give you a table. It will have everything in there that you need, and you'll just plug and chug your numbers. The only thing you have to remember is that if there is a number in the balanced equation, in front of that species, you have to multiply the value in the table by that number. Okay? Moving on, putting it all together. How can I be really mean and evil on a test or on a quiz? Okay? Because sometimes I like to fly in on my broomstick. I could give you an example like the next one in your notes where you have to find delta H, products minus reactants, and you would use the values in the table. And then you would find delta S, products minus reactants, using the values in the table. And then you would plug them into delta G. Okay, I really like this type of question because it makes you use three equations to find your answer. It shows you how they are all intertwined together. Okay, now you can also do delta G calculations the same way. I can give you a table of delta G values, and you just do products minus reactants, okay? So if I ask you for delta G and there's no entropy or enthalpy, enthalpy is the delta H or the heat value, and I give you these delta G values, you can do products minus reactants, okay? Now, what happens if I give you some free energy problems and I tell you they're under non-standard conditions, or I throw something in there like the word equilibrium constant, okay? 
Now, we all know how to do equilibrium constants. We know it's products over reactants. We know K equals products over reactants. Right, right, right. So, oh, 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 my little marker. It's time for new markers. This is the equation we're going to use in that situation, okay? This delta G value is going to be given to you in the problem. The only thing you're going to have to remember is it's probably going to be in kilojoules. So if it's in kilojoules, we're going to multiply it by 1,000, okay? R, we've seen R before. R is 8.314. T is... Temperature, temperature is going to be in Kelvin. If I give you degrees Celsius, add 273. Natural log of Q. Q is going to be that products over reactants. And in this example here, I'm going to just flash this back up really quick because my markers aren't doing the best. And this one, if you look towards the bottom, you can see in red, Q is products over reactants, so I just put those pressures in. I set it up the same way I've done before, and I get my answer, and I just put it right there into the equation. Now, when I finished this one, I found out that the answer was negative, and if you are negative, you are spontaneous. And those were the main big topics in Chapter 18. I know I kind of rushed through them. What I really recommend is you going back and pausing on the pages that I was holding up so you can see my work, okay? Can't wait to see you guys in class. It is almost summer. Toodles, poodles. Bye.